We'll just punch it down. Howdy folks, I am Martha and I welcome you to Hershberger's Miracle Homestead. The kitchen action we're having today is a request to do a bread that is not a sourdough bread. And this takes me back memory lane to years ago when I first started making bread. This is a church cookbook that I went to at the time. And in here is a recipe that the lady not only went to the same church, but she also had a restaurant, the Dutch oven. And that was her bread recipe that I started making. Now, here it says it should make seven to eight loaves of bread. And if you've been with us for a while, you know that we love our sourdough bread. So I have not only cut this recipe in half, I have quartered it. So hopefully we'll end up with about two loaves of bread instead of eight loaves of bread. Okay, we'll come in and go across the ingredients and then we'll mix it together. Okay, center in the front is sugar. Oil, this is empty. It represents water, but I need it warm and I need it hot. So I didn't want to get the water till I was ready to use it, but this represents water. Bread flour, salt, and then yeast. And we get ours in a big container at Sam's and then put it in this jar, but we use a dry active yeast. And two to two and a fourth teaspoons of the dry active yeast here equals one of the envelopes that you can buy. All right, the first thing we're going to do is get the yeast in water and getting it activated. I need a total of one and a half cups of water. Some use a half a cup to activate the yeast. This is a half a cup of warm water. I'll sprinkle my yeast across the top. Then with the teaspoon, I'm gonna borrow some of this sugar. Borrow. I'm gonna take some of this sugar and mix it with the yeast. It helps everything to proof and bloom better. And then I'll just give it a little stir. And now I will set this aside. Okay, in this bowl, we will put our oil, the salt, and the remaining sugar. We will give this a stir. And now the water for the yeast mixture, you want it real warm, but you don't want it hot. And in this mixture now, we need one cup of hot water. And we'll pour it into the oil and the sugar and the salt. So I'm going back for one cup of hot water, and I'm just doing hot tap water. So here we go, one cup of hot tap water. And now I'll give this a stir. Pull you in now and we'll show you the yeast. It has bloomed, activated, or proofed, whatever you're going to call it. And then this is the mixture that we just put together and the bread flour. And we'll actually be using a KitchenAid. I don't know how well you can see the yeast. I guess I should have showed it to you in the beginning. But anyway, there it is. Now what I need to do is slide this down. Bring the KitchenAid in. We're just going to dump both of these into the KitchenAid mixing bowl. Okay, so here's the yeast, and we will dump this in the oil mixture. And if you don't have a KitchenAid or a mixer that has the dough hook, you can always mix it by hand. I'll put this on the mixing bowl now. I'm going to start off with a slow speed, just mixing that together a little bit. All right, time to add bread flour in. I'm going to start out with that once. If we need to add more, we can always add more. Okay. 
Okay, it's still hanging to the side a little bit, so I'm going to go add some more. We want the bread to mix until it's smooth, so I'm just going to let it mix for a couple minutes. Okay, this dough feels smooth, it looks good, it smells good, and I had to actually lock the KitchenAid while it was mixing for cakes. A cake batter, I don't usually have to lock the KitchenAid, but it was a tough enough job, I had to lock it. So I unlocked it. So now we will just remove the bread dough from the mixing bowl here. We will get it out of the mixing bowl. A little bit on the bottom there yet. Okay. And now I will turn it over and this part of it got oiled just from sitting in the bottom of the bottom of the bowl. And now what we will do is cover it with a cloth or you could use saran wrap, plastic wrap or something like that. We will just use this. The main thing is to keep the breeze off. I thought about not putting it on because I usually put it in the oven, but I will go ahead and put it on. Don't turn your oven on at all. You want a cold oven. But if you want to warm it just a little bit, turn your oven light on and the oven light will give out a little bit of heat and that can help it to rise. We will go ahead and put this in the oven. I would turn the light on, but our light is out and we didn't get it replaced yet. But anyway, so in the oven there is where we usually have the sourdough bread rising without the oven light on and it works fine. So that's good. And just a quick minute here to welcome all our new subscribers. And if you've been with us for a while, we welcome you back. And if this is your first time with us, Welcome, we hope you enjoy it and consider subscribing. And also thanks for those that have liked and commented on our videos. We always enjoy reading the comments. And also those that have shared our videos on your social media. That all helps the channel to grow. And it's exciting to see that, so thank you very much. And the dough will let it rise until it's about double in size. And then we'll punch it down and let it rise again. And then we can loaf it out. Okie dokie folks, I have checked the bread dough. It has doubled in size. It was rising for about an hour and a half. Okay, we'll just punch it down. We will cover it again and put it back in the oven and then we'll be back. I am ready to get the bread out of the oven. And that is what we have. So that is definitely ready to go. I was undecided if I want to use a scale or just try to divvy it out evenly but I think I'm going to use a scale because I'm not used to working with that and to help make, help make cleanup easier I am putting the saran wrap on top of here and I'm going to put a little bit of oil on it 
So as I weigh out the bread, it doesn't get the thing messy. It'll be make for easier cleanup. I need to spray my pans. Okay, I'm gonna put some olive oil on the countertop. I wasn't sure to use oil or flour, but I sort of halfway remember we use oil, so that's what I will use here. Now let's put some of the, there we go. You know what, I'm gonna weigh this whole thing and see how much it weighs. I would have only needed two pans because I'm I thought I'd go for the same amount of weight that we do the sourdough bread, which is one and a half pounds per loaf. And that's just shy of one and a half per loaf. Then just work it together to get the air out. Now this one. Take my gloves off. All right, the two loaves of bread I'll bring in and we will poke it together. We don't do sourdough bread with a fork like this, but for this bread, we always uh, poke it with a fork and that helps that if there's any air in there to escape out. Okay, the bread is ready to go back in the oven to rise. It's not a hot oven, it's a cold oven, but at least it gets it out of any draft. And we will cover it with a towel. Well, I reached my goal for two loaves of bread. Now let me see if I can reach my goal to go out and get the puppies. They went from the carport out in the yard now they go from the yard into the barn for the night. And then, because the puppies will be in the barn, the big dogs will know it's their turn. And to prevent a lot of barking, I'll try to get them done as well. So, but in the meantime, Dorothy and I will keep an eye on the bread. If I need to bake it before I'm done with the chores, then we will. Okie dokie, folks. The oven is preheated to 350 and we will bake it for 30 minutes. And we'll be back when it's out of the oven. Well, guess what I have out of the oven? In my opinion, it's some beautiful homemade white bread. And I know I refer to our sourdough bread a time or two and we will leave a link for that in the description box and probably up here too somewhere then we also have a video on making the starter for sourdough bread, but we are focused on the white bread right now. What I'm going to do now is brush the top with some butter and then put it on the cooling rack. You can melt the butter or what I do is just the brush I'll put on the warm bread. I have a little bit there on the side and then that warmth that's on the brush picks up there we go. Put 
puts a shine to the bread, plus it helps the top to stay soft. Okie dokie. And now we will put it out on the cooling rack. Beautiful, beautiful. You can just leave it on top of the countertop to cool, but it's late enough into the evening. I would like as much air as possible to get up under it so it can cool faster. So what I'm going to do is the bread pans. Just let this rest on the bread pans like that. The bread pans will cool. They're warm right now, but they will get cold. But then this also opens up the air can get up under the bread and then it'll cool faster. You definitely want it completely cool before you wrap it. And at the request of one of our YouTube family to make a white bread that is not a sourdough bread. Why we have made this. So if, if there's anything y'all would like for us to make, I'm not promising we will. But if we feel like we have the ability to make it, why we would be happy to give it a try. What we did made two loaves of bread and that is the recipe that we will have in the description box. And by the way, it's tempting to cut into it now while it's hot, but it cuts so much nicer and so much better if you wait till it's cooled. So we will cut it after it's cooled. All right, the bread is cooled off the cooling rack and on the cutting board. Two beautiful loaves. Now I will bring you in close and we will cut into a loaf. I'm just going to turn this a little bit. I also want you to be able to see it. And that's going to be extra thick. Beautiful. So there we go. That is looking mighty fine to me. I want to thank you for joining me in the kitchen today in the making of the bread. And if you make it, I hope you enjoy the journey of working with yeast and watching it rise and punching it down and watching it rise again and then loafing it out and then watching it rise in the bread pan and finally being able to bake it and then smell the aroma in the kitchen and then being able to enjoy your bread. This bread is delicious. The texture is good as well. It's soft yet holds together very nicely. A few things that we can recommend to make are eggs in a nest, which we have here. We also made French toast sandwiches and regular toast, and we like a cinnamon butter on our toast. Thanks again for joining us, and now we invite you to stay tuned for the Golden Thought. Howdy folks and welcome to the Golden Thought of this episode. We're the twins Marvin and Martha. Usually we like to have our Golden Thoughts done ahead of time, but today is the day the video goes out. And we're just doing a thought, but it also means that we know what the video is. When we record ahead of time, we don't always know what the video is. But since we had bread and working with yeast, why we thought we would draw some lessons from yeast. And Jesus even used yeast as some of his object lessons in the Bible. One is in Matthew thirteen thirty three. Another parable spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. Yeast is very, very small in itself, but it can have a huge effect. Yeast does its job slowly from within, but the effects are very visible and changes whatever it's in. The same is true from the grace that we receive from God when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. His grace grows within us and changes us inside and out. And His grace also transforms us into something beautiful because of Jesus. Also, as yeast grows, it has a way of spreading. 
like it grew into two loaves of bread, in this case of the video today. And Jesus started his ministry with 12 disciples. And over the years, and today, there's thousands and thousands of people who are involved in active ministry, spreading the good news of Jesus across the world. And it started with Jesus and the 12 disciples. So remember, yeast does its job slowly, secretly, and silently. But no one can deny its effects on bread. The same is true of the work of grace within our hearts. We thank you for joining us on the episode today. We hope you've been blessed, encouraged, and inspired. And with that, God bless. <music>